all know that WrestleMania is the biggest event in professional wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it every year. It's the most watched wrestling event of the year. Even non-WWE fans take note of it. Even non-wrestling fans know about it. WrestleMania is that event for the WWE that is the Daytona 500, is March Madness, is the Super Bowl, the NBA Finals, the World Series, whatever you want to call it. It's important enough where cities actually bid now and fight over the right to host WrestleMania. So WrestleMania always always has this different vibe about it. It always has this bigger, more important feel about it. And as a result of this, WrestleMania is that singular event every year that gets the fans the most excited, the most energetic about the product, gets the product the most buzz, gets the most attention. Every year with WrestleMania, everybody knows it's WrestleMania season. It, again, has its own different, unique feel and buzz and aura to it. And even non-WWE fans, even people that hate WWE and watch other products, know when it's WrestleMania season, and they take note of it, whether they want to acknowledge it or admit it or not. WrestleMania is that one event, if there's any event to get excited about when it comes to the WWE. However, as I sit here right now, I'm just really looking for any reason why any of us should get excited about WrestleMania 31. With all that said, I personally can't remember a WrestleMania that I've been less excited about, that I've been anticipating less than this year's WrestleMania 31. Now, some of you might point to a WrestleMania 27 as a comparison point and say that was a show you weren't looking forward to. You knew that was going to be a bad show heading into it. But I even look back at WrestleMania 27, knowing four years ago at that time that I was talking about this was going to be a largely forgettable show and you were going to maybe have two or three things that stood out and then the rest of it was going to be crap. But I still had a few things to latch on to. I had Cody Rhodes versus Bray Mysterio. I had The Undertaker versus Triple H. I had The Rock as the guest host. I had The Miz in the main event of WrestleMania. I had things to look forward to that it had me at least somewhat excited about the event and the fact that it was still WrestleMania. But here we get to WrestleMania 31, and it doesn't really seem like I have any of those things. I don't have any reason, really, frankly, to be excited about this event. And furthermore, I find it very hard to believe that a lot of you are able to be excited about this event because how could you be? What do you really have to get excited about? And I think about it this way. If WrestleMania 27 was the bad show that most of us acknowledge that it was, and it at least still had things that I enjoyed about it, and it had things most importantly of all that I was looking forward to heading into that show, what does that mean for WrestleMania 31? I mean, seriously. What the hell is there to get excited about with this year's show? Oh, uh, well, let's take Daniel Bryan as one example. Here's arguably your most popular guy on the entire roster, yet WWE couldn't be bothered to have any real concrete plans for him heading into WrestleMania. Here is arguably your top guy, your most over babyface, with all segments of the audience in the right way, and you couldn't even be bothered to have real plans for him heading into your biggest show of the year. Him being in the IC title ladder match at WrestleMania is stupid. Don't listen to the idiots and knuckleheads that try to spin this as something good. No, this is stupid. Because he wasn't even a featured part of that. He's just now basically being thrown into that as an afterthought. The guy that so many of you love the most is being treated like an afterthought. Chasing a second tier title. Don't be bullshitted and fooled by the spot fest that's going to be that ladder match at WrestleMania. Daniel Bryan being in that match is fucking stupid. And if WWE doesn't seem to care about him, then frankly, why the hell should you? How about Dean Ambrose? Here's a guy that once the shield split up in the second half of 2014, broke off on his own and was doing some big things, some really, really good things, was really, really starting to get over. So, of course... Whether it be because they weren't believing in him, or they just didn't want to go there with him yet, or maybe he was being a threat to somebody's merch sales. I don't know. The WWE backed off the guy. 
So now here's one of the most popular young new faces that you have in the WWE. Instead of putting them in a featured program against somebody of significance at WrestleMania, you have them going after an inconsequential IC title where now, frankly, based off of what I'm seeing, he's not even going to be the featured guy. They've got everybody else doing what he was doing first. Again, WWE doesn't seem to care about Dean Ambrose. They most certainly don't if they're sending him after the IC champion who they don't give a damn about. If the WWE isn't excited about Dean Ambrose and doesn't care about Dean Ambrose, then why the hell should you care about him or why the hell should you be excited about anything that he's involved with come WrestleMania? Now, one thing I should be incredibly excited about this year is the thought of Sting working at WrestleMania. All those years, what would happen? What if? What if? And Sting's finally with the WWE. He's finally going to wrestle at WrestleMania. If I didn't have anything else for this year's show, I should have this. Sting finally in a WWE ring at the biggest show of them all, WrestleMania. But instead, I'm not that excited about it. Once I get over the fact that I'm seeing Sting in the WWE, it's just more of the same old bullshit. It's clearly God getting his. The Breakfast Club always takes care of Breakfast Club business. Best believe that. And Triple H getting to work Sting at WrestleMania is just another clear-cut example of that. The WWE is trying to, trying the best they can, to present this to you as some type of dream match that this is the fantasy match that we've been looking for for 10, 15, 20 damn years. And don't get me wrong, this is one of those matches that we've talked about for years. We've envisioned Triple H as an opponent for Sting. But this would be like a dream matchup of Mike Tyson facing somebody like a George Foreman in his prime instead of giving you Mike Tyson versus, let's say, Muhammad fucking Ali. He finally got Sting and The Undertaker under contract in the same company at the same time. And I don't want to hear any of that sanctimonious spin bullshit that's going to come from some of you. Well, next year, next year, next year. Is there any fucking guarantee at this point in time? No, there's not. The only guarantee you have is that you could do it this year, and they're freaking not doing it. So instead of giving us that ultimate dream matchup that we have been talking about and discussing for 15, 20 damn years of Sting versus The Undertaker, they're sending Bray Wyatt at The Undertaker. Oh, isn't this tremendous? Now, of course, that Taker's lost the streak at WrestleMania, he serves no purpose. So now is a perfect time to send Bray Wyatt at him a year too freaking late. And this is the type of situation for Bray Wyatt's character. There's no win. It's only a lose situation for Bray Wyatt, for The Undertaker, for the WWE. If Taker wins, then what the hell point does Bray Wyatt serve? And what the hell point did it serve to end the streak? If Taker loses, then what does it mean to have Brock Lesnar beat him last year if Wyatt's doing it again this year? And what does that mean for The Undertaker? Now he's gone from winning 21 WrestleManias in a row to losing two in a row. And there's not even a guarantee that this match is going to be any fucking good. And how stupid and ridiculous is this that it's looking like we might not even actually see The Undertaker until WrestleMania. And I'm supposed to get excited about this shit? And let's not even get into John Cena versus Rusev. We all know where this one's going. Why would we want to get excited about that? When ultimately, even if the WWE tries to swerve you and pretend like they're going to do something different with the Cena character, we always know it's going to boil down to the same old, tired, played-out bullshit tactics and is going to have a certain result at WrestleMania that we're probably not going to really like. I mean, what else is there to really get excited about when it comes to WrestleMania 31? You're going to have probably a tag title feud heading into that show that's more about the women, Naomi and Natalia, than it is about the champions or the challengers. You're going to have an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal that's going to be end up an incredible waste of time because somebody will win and then it'll just be somebody that they back off of a couple of months later. Who knows what they're going to do with Stardust and Goldust. And then one of the few feuds, one of the few matches that I was really looking forward to with Randy Orton and Seth Rollins at WrestleMania for some inexplicable reason. The WWE has decided to go the slow burn, no burn tactic with this, and it was the wrong approach. 
One of the few things that they had of real substance, one of the few things they had that really could have generated a lot of interest, could have had a lot of story to it, and could have been very, very compelling. And the WWE has magnificently found a way to fuck this up and kill most of my excitement for this match as well. But the personification and representation of my overall lack of interest level for WrestleMania 31 is all summed up in one match. And that is this WWE World Heavyweight Championship main event. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. You've got the chosen one, who really frankly hasn't been chosen at least by the fans, taking on the ultimate part-timer. Think about how bad of a situation this could be. You've got a guy in Roman Reigns who still needs a lot of work taking on a guy in Brock Lesnar who's not always the best when he's in charge of calling the match. Now you've got Brock Lesnar, the ultimate part-timer, the guy who's not very good at calling his own match, calling his own match at the biggest match of the biggest show of the fucking year. All the while with no certainties or guarantees that Brock Lesnar is going to be with the company post-WrestleMania. We have been down this path before. Need I remind you of what happened at WrestleMania 20? Think about how badly that turned out. Now you're in a situation here where not only could that happen again, but it could potentially happen at your biggest show of the year, in the biggest match of the year, the main event for the title at the biggest show. This truly, truly is the main event that WWE deserves. I mean, it's more than just the actual match card itself in the show. When I'm looking at that build-up to WrestleMania, that speaks volumes. And what speaks volumes to me about this road to WrestleMania is who's not there, who's not involved, who's not showing up. You don't have Austin making any appearances on the show. I'm not saying that he's required to, but I'm just saying. You don't have The Rock making any appearances as of this point. He did at the Royal Rumble, but that's it. He's got his family member in the main event taking on the guy that beat him at SummerSlam 2002 to take the undisputed title away from him. Vince McMahon has been too busy filming whatever the fuck type of photo shoot that was for muscle and fitness at age 69 to be bothered to actually appear on television on the road to WrestleMania. But who else isn't around? Sting, The Undertaker, Brock Lesnar. These are three guys that are in three of your biggest featured marquee matches for your biggest show of the year, and they can't even be bothered to be there. Like, I understand you have Sting for a limited number of dates, and that's okay. Especially if he was facing The Undertaker. But after Fastlane, he hasn't been there. Who knows when he's going to be there again? That's not the best way to build interest in a big time featured match. And you look at The Undertaker. I know some of you will sit there and say, well, what about WrestleMania 20? When he came back to face Kane, he, he, he didn't come, come on TV until WrestleMania. Well, that was 2004, damn it! It's an entirely different circumstance and situation in 2015. How stupid is this? That the guy that you had end this, his own streak because of part you wanted to move on, you thought it was time, just so that way you could bring him back the next fucking year. Now you're maybe not even going to have him on TV until WrestleMania. Oh, let's see what the fuck happens, because that's going to be a great way to generate interest in a feud with him, right? Holy shit. And then worst of all, the ultimate part-timer, Brock Lesnar. Do any of you still think it was a good thing that Brock Lesnar won the fucking title? Now let's see what your big mouth say after WrestleMania 31. This guy couldn't be bothered to show up, and he's the freaking champion. He has the belt, and he can't even be bothered to show up on the road to the biggest show of the year, what should be the biggest match of the year, the biggest title defense of his career. If these guys aren't there... Because in part, you look at it from a storyline, maybe somewhat realistic standpoint, because they don't care. Then why should we be there? And why the fuck should we care? Taking all of these other things into account that I've just stated, you can hopefully clearly understand why myself, I'm not excited for WrestleMania 31 whatsoever. And I have this ultimate feeling of dread of what's going to come with this show at the end of this month. But what I really wonder is, after all these things that I've stated, how any of you could be excited about this year's WrestleMania. Sure, you might get caught up in the fact that it's WrestleMania. It's always special, and it's always different. 
But once you get past that, what do you have to really get excited about? And for all of you that are going to sit there and say, yeah, this feels just like WrestleMania 27, I dispute that. I think this feels worse than WrestleMania 27. I think WrestleMania 31 is shaping up to be exactly what I've said it's going to be for a while. A largely forgettable show that's going to be a throwaway on the road to WrestleMania 32. What the hell is there to get excited about? Please tell me if I'm wrong. Please tell me why I should be excited. Please tell me why you would be excited about WrestleMania 31. Because I want to know. I can't wait to hear this.